Good morning. I welcome you to Zion Lutheran. Pleased to have you with us today. I'm Pastor Bruce Nenning. Pleased to serve you. Uh, those of you who live in town, did you get any sleep last night? How loud does that get? <laughs> does, we don't hear it 16 miles away, thank goodness. But uh, anyway, hopefully you got some sleep. Um, we welcome those on live stream as well as those on radio. Um, the worship uh, songs we're singing for those who have a hymn book at home are 850, 735, and the communion hymns. Uh, the first one is not in the hymn book. The second is 748, 715, and the closing hymn 711. Um, today we focus on, on the fact that all of us in varying degrees have fears, and the theme of the message is Jesus comes to wait on us in the midst of all of our challenges of life, but especially our fears. So we turn to uh, hymn 850, God of grace, God of glory. Divine Service Setting 1. It's found on page 151. If you're using the hymn book, it'll also be on the screen. I invite you to please rise. Remembering the time when God claimed us as his own in baptism, we hear those words spoken again. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear friends, if we say we haven't sinned, we're deceiving ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins 
and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We pause for a silent reflection to name any particular sins that we feel, feel that weigh heavy on our hearts. Then together let us confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his Son to die for us, and for his sake forgives us all of our sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And we continue on page 152 with the Kyrie. Mm -hmm. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord.
be with you. Let us pray. Almighty, most merciful God, preserve us from all harm and danger that we, being ready in both body and soul, may cheerfully accomplish what you want done. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Amy Erickson is our lector this morning, and the first reading from Genesis is uh, the life of Abram, um, frustrated, not yet having a child, and then you hear the powerful promise of God telling him he would be the father of many nations, many people, including you and me. Good morning. First reading, then, is from Genesis chapter 15. After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Fear not, Abram, I am your shield. Your reward shall be very great. But Abram said, O Lord God, what will you give me? For I continue childless, and the heir of my house is Elizer of Damascus. And Abram said, Behold, you have given me no offspring, and a member of my household will be my heir. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him. This man shall not be your heir. Your very own son shall be your heir. And he brought him outside and said, Look toward heaven and number the stars. If you are able to number them, then he said to him, So shall your offspring be. And he believed the Lord and he counted it to him as righteousness. This is the word of the Lord. In the second reading from Hebrews, um, the whole chapter of Hebrews is about examples of faith. Pay attention especially to the verse, first verse. You receive a definition of faith and it goes on to speak about many examples of people of faith. Hebrews chapter 11. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. For by it the people of, the old, of old received their commendation, by faith we understand that the universe was created by the word of God, so that what is seen was not made out of things that are visible. By faith, Abel offered to God a more acceptable sacrifice than Cain, through which he was commended as righteous, God commending him by accepting his gifts. And through his faith, though he died, he still speaks. By faith, Enoch was, t was taken up so that he should not see death, and he was not found because God had taken him. Now before he was taken, he was commended as having pleased God. And without faith, it is impossible to please him. For whoever would draw near to God must believe that he exists and that he war rewards those who seek him. By faith, Noah, being warned by God concerning events as yet unseen, in reverent fear constructed an ark for the saving of his household. By this he condemned the world and became an heir of the righteousness that comes by faith. By faith Abraham conveyed when he was called to go out to a place that he was to receive as an inheritance. And he went out, not knowing where he was going. By faith he went to live in the land of promise, as in a foreign land, living in tents with Isaac and Jacob, heirs with him of the same promise. For he was looking forward to the city that has foundations, whose designer and builder is God. By faith, Sarah herself received power to conceive, even when she was past the age, since she considered him faithful, who had promised. Therefore, from one man, and him as good as dead, were born descendants as many as the stars of heaven, and as many as the innumerable grains of sand by the seashore. These all died in faith, not having received the things promised, but having seen them and greeted them from afar, and having acknowledged that they were strangers and exiles on the earth. For people who speak thus make it clear that they are seeking a homeland. If they had been thinking of that land from which they had gone out, they would have had opportunity to return. But as it is, they desire a better country, that is, a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared them a city. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
On page 156, the Alleluian verse, it's good to comment from time to time the context of this from John 6. Jesus had just been teaching that he was the bread of life and a good number of people who followed him said, we don't get this, we're leaving. And so Jesus turned to his disciples and said, what about you guys, are you going to leave me too? And this was Peter's response. You have the words of eternal life, where else can we go? So let's rise and sing those, those words. Gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 12. Glory to you, O Lord. On the topic of fear, Jesus addresses here about our worries in life, uh, how to go about life, living to serve him and others. He also focuses on helping us to evaluate what truly is our treasure in life, and finally, the last verses talk about how important it is to be prepared, <clears throat> to be ready when he returns. And he said to his disciples, Therefore I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat, nor about your body, what you will put on. For life is more than food. The body is more than clothing. Consider the ravens. They neither sow nor reap. They neither have storehouse nor barn. And yet God feeds them of how much more value are you than the birds? And which of you, by being anxious, can add a single hour to his span of life? If then you who are not able to do as small thing as that, why are you anxious about the rest? Consider the lilies, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all of his glory was not arrayed like one of these. But if God... So clothes the grass, which is alive in the field today, tomorrow is thrown into the oven. How much more will he clothe you, O oh, you of little faith? And do not seek what you are to eat and what you are to drink, nor, nor be worried. For all the nations of the world seek after these things, and your Father knows that you need them. Instead, seek his kingdom. These things will be added to you. Fear not, little flock. For it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give to the needy. Provide yourselves with money bags that do not grow old, with a treasure in the heavens that does not fail, where no thief approaches and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Stay dressed for action. Keep your lamps burning and be like men who are waiting for their master to come home from the wedding feast, so that they may open the door to him at once when he comes and knocks. Blessed are those servants whom the master finds awake when he comes. Truly I say to you, he will dress himself for service and have them recline a table, and he will come and serve them. For he comes in the second watch or in the third and finds them awake, blessed are those servants. But know this, that the master of the house had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would not have left his house to be broken into. And you also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We join our hearts together as we make profession of our faith. Today we use the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. 
and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead whose kingdom will have no end and I believe in the Holy Spirit the Lord and giver of life who proceeds from the Father and the Son who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified who spoke by the prophets and I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins and I look for the resurrection of the dead and life the world to come Amen the song that introduces the message today is hymn 736 have no fear little flock please be seated pray. Lord, you know us far better than we know ourselves. You know our weaknesses, you know our strengths, you know what we need. And we give thanks to you that you come, Lord Jesus, to wait on us in the midst of our fears of life, in the midst of our needs of life. You will never let us down. In your name we pray. Amen. Grace, peace, and mercy be multiplied unto all of you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Fear. Who of us can say, I've never had any fears? Fears are many and varied. They come to all ages. Little children fear being alone. Some fear the dark. Some fear some creepy sounds in the night that they've never heard before. Some fear where and when the next meal will come from. I can remember hearing one person once talk about they had adopted a four-year-old little boy from a foreign country where food was scarce. And it took several weeks for him to get over the fact that he would have food at the next meal. So after each meal, when his stomach was full, he would fill his hands with food and take it back to his room, wondering if he would have food the next time he was hungry. Students feel failure in, in schoolwork and sports and in all kinds of things. If they fall short of accomplishing what is expected of them, they live in fear of the angry or maybe disappointed coach, teacher, or parent. Teenagers fear rejection by friends and so are tempted to say and do things they know are not pleasing to God because they want to fit in. People fear potential loss of job, fear of disappointing their spouse, fear of not being accepted by others, fear of potential illnesses like COVID, cancer, and a long list of others. People live in fear of the approaching storm. Many have concerns and fears for our country and the situation is found in today. 
As we age, people fear their physical and mental abilities, and on and on. The gospel reading for today brings about another fear that people have fear of. Am I ready for Jesus when he returns? Will I be awake when he returns? Will I be watching for him? Will I be saved when he returns? After all, I've thought, did, and did a whole lot of things not pleasing in God's sight. Will I be good enough? Will I be found acceptable in God's eyes? And to all of our fears, whether it's health, food, job, or spiritual issues, Jesus comes to wait on us as he says, Do not be afraid, little flock, for your Father has been pleased to give you the kingdom. And he also says he will dress himself for service and he will come and serve us. Do not be afraid. Comforting words that came from the mouth of Jesus many times, words that came from the mouths of angels as well. Jesus comes, he waits on, on us to reduce and take away our fears. He invites us to rest in him. When he says, come to me all ye that are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Rest from our fears. After a terrible accident, a man woke up in the hospital bed, trying to get his bearings. He saw his chart at the end of the bed, and so he slowly crawled down to the edge of the bed to take a look at it. And the top of the chart was his name, and it said, Condition Critical. And he thought to himself, What? Me? Critical? Leaning back on his pillow, Looking up to the ceiling in prayer, he prayed, Well, Lord, there's nothing I can do about this. I'm throwing myself into your hands. May your will be done. And much later, after recovering, the man said he had never felt so much complete sense of relief and peace as when he prayed that prayer. He said, I released it. I put it all into God's hands, and I knew he would do what is best. Whatever our fears, doubts, or worries may be, Jesus wants us to learn to do the same, to lean on him and to put them all into his hands and not doubt that he will do what is best for us. That's what trust is. King Solomon gave one of the best definitions of trust in the Bible in Proverbs 3, verses 5 and 6, when he says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will make your path straight. Our minds like to think we have it all figured out, we have all the answers, that's not trust. It's trusting in God and believing that despite what our minds think, he will do what is best for us. Above all else, Jesus wants us to rely on, on him totally for our soul's salvation. For until we do that, We'll never have a day of peace. We'll live in fear concerning our eternal dwelling place. Way, way back when I was at D.C. at Sabin, Minnesota, and that goes way back in the 70s, I, our church was pastorally vacant for a year. And so that meant the class that got confirmed during that year of vacancy, I taught them for two years. And the elders in their wisdom thought, you know, before we confirm these guys, we maybe should call in, another, uh, call in a pastor to do some examination of them just to make sure you, you did it all right. So we did, and one of the students asked this pastor, he said, why are you so sure about going to heaven? And the pastor answered, not in the way I would have answered, but he certainly got the kid's attention when he said, if I wasn't so sure about it, then I'd be out raising hell with the rest of the unbelievers in the world. <laughs> he got their attention, but then he went on to say, You see, one of the most beautiful things about the Christian faith is that we have peace and certainty concerning our soul's salvation, because it doesn't depend on us at all. It depends upon what Jesus has already done for us. Obviously, I was a good student. I could quote and remember him word for word. He handled it well. In John 6, 47, Jesus said, I tell you the truth, he who believes has everlasting life. Has is present tense. It means it's in our possession now. It means that the certainty of heaven is ours now. 
God wants us to go through life with that certainty. We just don't receive it in all its fullness until the last day when Christ comes back at the great resurrection and body and soul are reunited and we receive the fullness of the glories of heaven. But that's not to say our guilty conscience or questioning mind, the deceptive ways of Satan, won't try to plant some doubt from time to time. So how do we handle the doubts that come our way? We go back to the promises of Jesus. We read his word. We're reminded of those wonderful promises that God works the Holy Spirit in our mind and heart through the word of God to cast doubts aside. In addition to that, we pray for peace and affirmation. We might seek out the counsel of a pastor or a trusted Christian friend who we can discuss some of the struggles and doubts we may have. For just a minute, close your eyes and honestly answer the four questions I'm going to ask. If you can answer yes to these questions, I can assure you that heaven is your home. So here we go. Do you believe that you are a sinner and because of your sins, you are deserving of God's wrath and damnation? Number two, do you believe that God has sent his only son Jesus to earth to be placed on the cross to be punished for all of your sins? Thirdly, do you trust and rely only on Jesus and what he has done, not on your goodness, but on what he has done to make you acceptable for salvation? And lastly, do you exercise that trust by confessing your sins? Hey, open your eyes. If you could answer those questions and say yes to them, then I can assure you heaven is your home. God wants you to live every day of your life with that peace and assurance, not wondering, will I make it? Will I be acceptable? Have I been good enough? None of that counts. What counts is... Jesus was good enough in our place. He makes those who believe in him acceptable. If anyone here or those listening on the radio or those watching a live stream struggle with this, give me a call, make an appointment with me. I'd be glad to visit with you about it. Therefore, Jesus is saying today to each of us, do not be afraid, little flock. Your father has been pleased to give. It's a gift of God to give you the kingdom. A free gift because of who Jesus is, what he has done for us by his life, his death, and his resurrection. Then in verse 37, it says, When Jesus comes, he will dress himself to serve, will have them recline at the table, will come and wait on them. Jesus comes to wait on you and me. That verse reminds me of Jesus washing his feet, the picture on the screen on Monday, Thursday night, he instituted Holy Communion. Why did he do it? He explained it to his disciples and to us when he said, If I then, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that you also should do just as I have done to you. If Jesus, our teacher, our Lord, and our master, would humble himself to wash the feet of his disciples, even we need to learn to humble ourselves and become servants of others. As we do, we will be blessed by the Lord. Jesus still comes to us personally to wait on us. He does that today in Holy Communion. He did that today when you heard that your sins are forgiven. He does it in Bible study and worship. He comes to us personally to wait on us when we take time for devotions like your, whatever devotional book you're using, maybe Portals of Prayer or for a family, My Devotions or many other resources. It's Jesus who comes to us to teach us, to serve us, to forgive us, to assure us of salvation, to strengthen and equip us to be his servants, to serve others. So what does it mean to be ready and awake when our master Jesus returns in the last day of the world. That the last reading said that in the gospel reading. It means we go through every day believing that Jesus is our savior from sin, death, and hell. That means to be awake, it means to be ready. It means as verse 35 says, be dressed and ready for service. The life of a Christian is, a, is our thank you gift back to God for all he has done for us. 
So we follow the example that Jesus has modeled to be humble servants. As we see people in need and distress, whether they, that be physically, spiritually, emotionally, in grief and loneliness or depression, God has placed us in their life to serve them. We are ready for service when we regularly pray for the needs of others. Pray for the expansion of God's kingdom to, re to reach the lost. Pray as we do at the end of our worship services, Lord, open doors for me to proclaim the good news of Jesus to others. The Holy Spirit equips us to become such humble disciples of Christ as we're in the Word of God. That's what he works through in our heart to nurture our faith and to equip us. Yes, Jesus waits on you and me through word and sacraments. We gather to hear God's word, to receive his forgiveness, to be equipped, to be sent forth, and then we scatter into our everyday lives, wherever that takes us during the week, to represent him, to be humble servants in his name. That's the church gathered, and that's the church scattered, and as it does, God's kingdom grows. Amen. Almighty God, your word is cast like seed into the ground. Now let the dew of heaven descend and righteous fruit abound. Amen. Please rise, express a Christian greeting to those around you. And we continue our worship by returning to the Lord uh, the best of our income, which we, the Bible refers to as our first fruits. We give to God our best and trust him to, pre, to be able to us to meet all of our needs as a result of that, and he does. Please sign the record of fellowship while you're here. May God bless our worship together.
I invite you to rise for prayer. Our partners in, in ministry, uh, Ashley Lear, who was here and spoke to LWML, I think it was last year, outreach team in Puerto Rico, and uh, Pastor Tom Park, a former co-worker of mine, he's not in Taiwan because of all the craziness going on over there, but he is teaching in Korea, South Korea, his, his home country. So we pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for providing for us. Forgive us for the times we worry about all too many things. Worry is part of our sinful nature. Worry is sins that you, Lord Jesus, died on the cross to pay for. May we claim your victory over those worries and lean on you, knowing that you will come to wait on us. Lord, in your mercy. We pray this day for Ashley Lear. We pray for Pastor Tom Park. Um, keep them in your protective care as they proclaim the good news in other parts of the world. Uh, may our prayers and our financial support, support be a blessing to them as well as the support of many others. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for those who grieve the death of loved ones. Uh, Bill Hansen, Warren Nunn, may their families be surrounded by the warmth of your love, the promises of your word, the, the promise of the resurrection. Uh, fill them, their moments of loneliness, with your presence, Lord Jesus, the warmth of your love, fill that void. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. For those who stand in need of healing, for Glenn Sunram, Sharon Shockley, Pastor Fred Whippick, Diane Keel. Grant German, Eldon Motz, Marlene Christensen, Vanita Hartman, and all others that we silently name before you now. Gracious Heavenly Father, we commend each of these individuals into your arms of loving mercy. Look down upon them in your grace. Provide for their needs, first spiritually and then physically. If it be your will, restore them to health and strength. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Giving thanks to you for the blessing of marriage, Lord, that you instituted. We remember this week, Pastor Dan and June Abrahams, Art and Stacy Specht, Zach and Abby Eifelt, John and Katrina Kaluski, Jeremy and Tara Skogan. May they thank you, Lord, for your institution of this wonderful union Keep Christ at the center of their lives, the center of their marriage. May you fill them, Lord, with your self-sacrificial love to share with one another. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. And for those in our Zion family celebrating birthdays this week, for Chuck Chadbourne, Gabriel Korb, Isabella Briard, Jacob Kimball, Emily Amundsen, Gideon Briard, Julie German, Peyton Harstig, Lori Nelson, Harley Olson, Brooke Spellfy, Barbara Bennett, Betty Hughesby, Jeffrey Missling, and Carissa Swartz. Heavenly Father, bless them on the day of their birth. May they have fond memories of life and receive your hand involved in their life and praise your name. May family and loved ones remember them and celebrate the gift of their life as well. Lord, in your mercy. These things we pray in Jesus' name, and we continue with the service of the sacrament on page 160. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of all creation, 
For you have had mercy on us and given your only begotten Son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. In these last days you have poured out your Holy Spirit on your church that your sons and daughters might proclaim the wonders of your salvation accomplished by the death and resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Send us your Holy Spirit, the Spirit of truth, that faithfully eating and drinking the body and blood of your Son, we thereby remember him and proclaim his salvation to the ends of the earth. Hear us as we pray in his name and as he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup, and when he had supped, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is a New Testament, and my blood, which is shed for you for the remission of sins, this do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
please rise. Now may this holy body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ keep you in the true faith unto life everlasting, for the Lord chooses to remember your sins no more. So depart in peace and with joy in our Lord. Amen. We join in singing Thank the Lord on page 164. Let us pray. Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, you have given us a foretaste of the feast to come and the Holy Supper of your Son's body and blood. Keep us firm in the true faith throughout our days of pilgrimage, that on the day of his coming we may, together with all your saints, celebrating the marriage feast of the Lamb and his kingdom, which has no end. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Receive the blessing of our Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift his favor upon each of you and fill you with his peace. Amen. And we continue with our outreach prayer. Again, a reminder, thinking terms of people you know living apart from Christ and his church. Keep them in mind as together we pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, someone I know needs your grace and mercy in their life. Give me an opportunity this week to talk to the person I have in mind who needs to hear of your love. Keep my eyes open for the opportunity that I know you will give me. Make me bold and courageous in my witness or invitation. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And we join in hymn 711, verse 1 and verse 4, Savior, like a shepherd, lead us. Please be seated.
It's a number of things in your info guide. I'll just comment on a couple of them. Today is Might Sunday, so that box is in the back of church. Um, August 21st, uh, family activity. Um, Zion who would members who would like to join the, a trip to the zoo. That'll happen after the late service. That's the zoo at Virgus. Um, on page four, you have a, a list of, of a Sunday, uh, uh, not Sunday, but school supply drive. And this is not, you know, this is for a lot of it's through Orphan Grain Train, which goes worldwide, our country, and across the seas as well. So if you have some items you'd like to bring, please do so. Um, Sunday school starting soon, please register. We still are in need of fourth and fifth grade. That's a combined classes. Teacher or teachers, it's nice to have two. Sometimes they can share and, and sometimes they can be, not have to be there every Sunday that way. Uh, Zion serving Tuesdays in the park. That goes throughout the summer, but the August 23rd, our church is hosting that. So there's information there if you would like to help provide some food to make that happen. Um, please take a look at that also. There's more in there, but you can read it on your own unless someone has something they'd like to say yet. You heard enough already. Okay. God bless you with a good week in the Lord. <laughs>